Lewis and Saya Taylor. All right, sisters and brothers, we have heard a lot of stories today. We have heard of women's lives mangled, of hopes crushed, and we have heard the truth of what it means when the state, driven by Christian fascist hatred of women, forces women to have children against their will, or drives them to desperate measures to avoid it. This is the truth. Forced motherhood is female enslavement. But we have also heard courage. And in just a few minutes, sisters and brothers, we are going to demonstrate our courage. We are going to see bravery. As people who are among us here today, put it on the line in nonviolent civil disobedience. Because we have come to understand that it is time to put it on the line. It is time to say enough. It is time to find our courage. And through doing so, to summon the courage of millions and millions of women across this society that they don't even yet know is burning within them. And the fury. And on March 8th, International Women's Day at 3 p.m. at Union Square in this city and all across the country in marches and protests nationwide, we are going to manifest this fury, this courage, and this power undeniably. Because this fascist program of control over women relies on us cowering in the silence that they heap on us. It relies on us hiding in the shadows of the shame that they illegitimately cast on women. They rely on us cringing in fear at the pain they inflict on us and the bigger pain they intend to bring down. And this silence, it plays into their hands. This silence has allowed them to advance this assault on abortion rights over decades with very little cost. And today, at this moment when Roe v. Wade, the right to abortion nationwide, hangs in the balance, we have to say the truth here. This silence is being aided and abetted by the so-called leaders of the so-called women's movement who are telling you that you can do nothing but roll over and accept the obliteration of Roe v. Wade, either outright or in effect. They are telling you the best you can do is prepare for a post-Roe America and maybe help a few women travel to another state or teach a few women how to induce their own abortions and hopefully stay out of jail and out of the hospital and maybe pass a few laws in a few local areas to protect us and let millions of women's lives be shattered and foreclosed. Whatever they call this, however they dress it up, this is capitulation. And the fact that this so-called women's movement and the people of this country did not flood the streets in fury, did not shut down every freeway, did not walk out of every school, did not bring this society to a halt when the state took away the right to abortion to six million women of childbearing age in Texas last September. This is shameful. This is shameful. And this stops now. This stops today. Because when we rise, when we dare, when we back it up with our bodies on the line and the God's forsaken truth, the God's honest truth, then we are right. Right is on our side and they are wrong and the shame belongs on them. When we put it on the line, we can summon a force and call forward a force that is a match for these fascist women haters. That is a match for these dark ages shame throwers. That is a match for these pompous patriarchal politicians who have no right to tell a woman what to do with her body and her life. 
this fury, this unbridled, unrestrained fury of millions and millions of women rising up and rebelling against thousands and thousands of years of tradition's chains. This fury is a force that can shake the whole society and it can change the whole world. And that is what we aim to do. Yes, this is going to take a fight. And yes, it is going to take sacrifice. And yes, at times it's gonna be scary. But I say look at the women of Colombia. Look at the victory they won just in the last week. Yes, they fought by opening clinics. Yes, they fought in the legal arena for years. But what tipped the tide in that country where they won the decriminalization of abortion in a Catholic country, in a patriarchal repressive state, they won it what tipped the tide is when they looked at the women of Argentina who are raising this green bandana and filling the streets with their fury relentlessly, courageously, in the face of sacrifice, and they won the right to abortion. In the streets, and in Mexico, they decriminalized abortion by going into the streets. And in Colombia, when they went into the streets, they opened up that victory, and you saw their faces. Look at the pictures, the joy the tears of relief, the joy that is the taste of a victory for the people. Something sweet that far too many people in this world have ever savored, but we intend to. This, this fury, that spirit is what needs to manifest on March 8th, International Women's Day. And we need to take this green bandana and wear it and spread it and tell people what they did and let them know that we too are strengthened and inspired by their struggle and carrying it forward here. So this is the path that we are opening up today. This is the path being carved by those who will put their bodies on the line in civil disobedience in just a few moments when I'm done speaking. And here, I want to read a quote. It's a quote that I've drawn inspiration from and returned to many times. It's a quote from the revolutionary leader, Bob Avakian, who is also the architect of the new communism. And I want to acknowledge that there are many people here in this fight for abortion rights who are not fighting for the same revolution that B.A. Bob Avakian and myself are fighting for. But all of us are waging a fight for fundamental change up against an oppressive state up against a patriarchal church, up against the capitulation and passivity of all too many that should be on our sides. And this quote has application to what all of us are doing. And he says, quote, I have several times noted the fact that for the advanced forces, for those who come to the forefront of the revolutionary struggle, there is a heavy weight to carry it is demanding a lot of them to play this role, to be the ones to most steadfastly carry the revolutionary struggle along. But it is not too much to demand. In basketball, there are those players who are not only outstanding in general, but who specifically make the big plays at the crucial moments. These are the ones who want the ball when crunch time comes when the whole game is on the line. They are the ones who love to go into the home court of their biggest rivals and rise to their greatest heights in the face of the other team and their howling, screaming fans. They are the ones who not only soar to great heights themselves, but in so doing, raise the level of their team as a whole. Why shouldn't the advanced forces of proletarian revolution those who have the most profound interest in this revolution and the most profound desire for revolution, why shouldn't they be capable of this kind of greatness?" End quote. We here are capable of this kind of greatness. So for all of you who came here today, not decided to participate in civil disobedience, if you feel that stirring within you, 
If you feel moved to participate, I want you to know that it will matter. And I want to say that a life lived without ever putting it on the line for something that truly matters is, a not, is not a life lived well. And for everyone, whether you take that particular step with us today or not, do not squander the truth and the courage you have seen here today. Do not squander the hopes that have been raised from all those tuning in, walking by, donating, and spreading the word who helped make this happen. And do not squander the strength of those who will be putting it on the line in nonviolent civil disobedience. Stand with them. Bear witness. Document it and put it on social media. Spread it everywhere. And soak up this courage. Let it fuel you. And then tonight, as soon as this event is over, whether it's right after you leave or later tonight, when you get out of jail, if you end up there, get on the phone and get on your text and get in touch with everybody you know, your family, your friends, your coworkers, your classmates, the people in your building and the strangers on the street, and you tell them that there is a movement standing up. You tell them there is a juggernaut coming for the lives of women. You tell them that they need to join us in the streets on March 8th, International Women's Day. And as part of this, you tell them this Wednesday, they need to be at a mass meeting at 7 p.m. right here in New York City. And then you're gonna be there too. And if you need to t change your schedule, change your schedule. Because we need to get together this Wednesday to honor those who get do the civil disobedience, but more than that, to roll up our sleeves and get to work together to figure out how we're going to reach people across this city, the students on the campuses, the people in the arts, the medical professionals, the young people, and the people locked at the bottom of society, people and everywhere in between, to turn out and make this March 8th truly powerful, March 8th International Women's Day. Now, International Women's Day People should know this. This is a day when the struggle for the liberation of women all over the world is declared. And in the revolution that I am fighting for, women's liberation is completely bound up with the fight to emancipate all of humanity. And to make this real, this means this year, we must fight with all we've got for the right to abortion. So together, let's make this International Women's Day 2020, the day that the fascists and the women haters began to get nervous, began to realize that those they have stepped on, those they have discounted, those they have disrespected, those they have treated as zeros, rose up and started to change the tide. Just like in Colombia, just like Argentina, just like in Mexico, and yes, through our struggle, let us also draw inspiration from the women of Poland who have fought relentlessly for abortion rights. And let us, through our fury and our defiance, send strength back to them that they might continue that fight unbroken until victory. And from there, March 8th, we will puncture the silence. We will wake up millions more, and then we will go to work together to do the hard but necessary and inspiring work to spark and spread and organize tens of thousands more and ultimately millions in a movement massive enough, righteous enough, defiant and relentless enough that we sweep across this country and make clear to the fascists on the Supreme Court and women haters everywhere that if they try to take this right away, their society will be prevented from functioning it at all. No business as usual. It is up to us. This is within our grasp. Everyone here has a role to play. And from here forward, we are going to fight with all we've got. We are going to demand the Supreme Court not decimate women's rights and deny their humanity. We are going to fight and win abortion on demand and without apology. Thank you. Um.